subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect the yoga event is held here severe injustice and they should be stopped we should raise our voices condemn this uh, brutal act Hello viewers I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus let's begin the show India handed a two pronged defeat to China this week while its army humiliated Chinese PLA in a small yet significant confrontation during PLA's provocative attempt to alter the status quo along India's Ladakh border a ban on over 100 Chinese mobile apps was announced in another incident The tensions along the border are growing as an unnerved PLA is building its troops and artillery along line of actual control. New Delhi maintains it prefers peace but will go any distance to protect its territorial integrity. While these candid pictures captured in past few weeks might hint towards a developing camaraderie between Indian and Chinese troops, the situation is not all okay at the ground. The two sides are ramping up their troops and guns along Ladakh border. The fresh standoff between the Chinese PLA and the Indian army unfolded following China's yet another attempt to intrude into Indian territory to secure advantageous positions. They were preempted and sent back. Some unconfirmed reports even say that PLA suffered casualties. Chinese attempts prove counterproductive as India has now gained control of vantage point in the region and now from its leadership to army to media all have become jittery The recent incident has exposed China's duplicitous foreign policy regarding its borders While it has been sending its communist PLA generals to hold talks with their Indian counterparts, its leadership has been constantly hatching nefarious plots. New Delhi says it seeks more sincerity from Beijing as de-escalation and disengagements were discussed in past but were not followed in spirit by Chinese side. now the way ahead is negotiations both through the diplomatic and military channels the indian side is firmly committed to resolving all outstanding issues through peaceful dialogue we therefore strongly urge the chinese side to sincerely engage the indian side with the objective of expeditiously restoring the peace and tranquility in the border areas through complete disengagement and deescalation in accordance with the bilateral agreements and protocols while china's incursion attempts in ladakh pose a security challenge for india the locals living in the region say that their life and livelihood has been severely affected due to pla provocations the primary source of income for people living in the region is tourism Both domestic and international tourists travel the place in large numbers to cherish the captivating icy hill tops and serene Pangong Lake. Abhi ek ye Chinese jo incursion ho raha hai continuously वैसे तो बहुत टाइम से चल रहा है अभी लास्ट ईयर से थोड़ा ज़्यादा बढ़ गया और इस साल जैसा सिचुएशन है उसके कारण नेक्स्ट ईयर क्या होगा कहना बहुत मुश्किल है 
तो जो एक्सपेक्टेशन हम कर रहे थे उस पर भी ज्यादा खराब भी हो सकते हैं Chinese expansionist agendas are not unique and limited to India, but it has been trying to grab land across globe with its neighborhood frequently complaining about its designs. United States, Japan, Australia, Vietnam to many other smaller countries all have confronted Beijing in last few weeks. They have called out China saying they won't tolerate intrusive designs of any nature. Meanwhile, India has also banned over 100 Chinese mobile applications that it finds violative of security norms of the country. China, which is increasingly losing its trade and share across the world, is understandably frustrated. 印度方面呢，他宣布要封禁中国一些先进、好用、广受欢迎的应用的程序。我想，首先受损的呢是印度用户的权益，当然呢也会损害中国企业的合法权益。但是，印方的有关的决定吧，是损人不利己的行为。Tencent, the owner of the popular mobile game PUBG, lost 2% shares within two days of the ban. India says the current situation has been the direct result of China's military misadventures. It says it is ready for talks at all levels, but will not let anybody violate status quo at border. China on the other hand is involved in spinning lies to mislead its own people who are now beginning to seek accountability from communist party Time appears perfect when China introspects and addresses its domestic issues before entering others territories as only damage and damage awaits it there Hydro power projects is a new buzzword in Pakistan's illegally occupied territories of POK and Gilgit Baltistan and it's not a heartening story of growth and prosperity but a sad saga of plunder and pain Islamabad has been vigorously constructing dams across these regions to meet its energy needs unsurprisingly all is being done against the consent of the locals such constructions in the past have not only left them deprived of water but the ecology and ecosystem of the region has badly suffered they do not want their woes to grow widespread protests have erupted but are they enough to control pakistan's dams mission especially when being pursued with chinese assistance pakistan is planning to scale up its hydropower generation several times by constructing mega dams in the illegally occupied territories of pok and Gilgit Baltistan an otherwise cash strapped country pakistan has collaborated with chinese companies to pursue the mission locals call it an exploitative nexus dozens of them will be constructed in coming few years gohala hydropower project azad patan in pok and dayamar bhasha dam in gilgit baltistan are three among many that are projected to boost the production Many say that sustained exploitation of the resources has induced a humanitarian crisis in the region. Acute water shortage has forced large-scale displacements, and those who are stayed back are living under dismal health conditions. They do not have even the electricity they were promised. The ecological balance too has been severely hampered, with the region losing a considerable amount of flora and fauna. due to indiscriminate industrial activities ye jo in dino aapko muzaffarabad ke andar ye garmi aur jo pani ki shortage ka silsila jo aapko dekhne mein aa raha hai ye iski jo basic wajah hai 
वो ये है कि इस मुजफ्फराबाद के अंदर एक बहुत बड़ा प्रोजेक्ट नीलम जेलम हाइड्रो प्रोजेक्ट के नाम से जो है वो लगाया गया और जो ख़ास तौर पर जो हमारा ये डिवीज़न मुजफ्फराबाद था कि इसकी दो वैलीज़ जो नीलम वैली और जेलम वैली ये दरख्तों से माला माल थी जो हमारा सर सर दरख्त था ये वैली हमारी जो है उन दरख्तों से माला माल थी और आज से पीछे आप बीस साल पीछे चले जाएँ पच्चीस साल पीछे चले जाएँ तो इन दिनों जो हमारा टेम्परेचर होता था वो बहुत डाउन था ये हमारा बड़ा एक आइडियल मौसम होता था बरसात का मौसम कि इन दिनों में एक नॉर्मल एक टेम्परेचर होता था और हम बड़े अच्छे तरीके से अपनी ज़िंदगी गुजारते थे एक माफिया आया एक हुकूमत आई और मुख्तलि पॉलिसियाँ आई तो वो दरख्त काटे गए और उस माफिया ने और उन हकूमतों ने पहले तो हमसे हमारे सर सब जो है वो दरख्त छीने जिससे एक बहुत बड़ा जो है माहौल के ऊपर अफेक्ट हुआ अब दूसरी तरफ अब हम आते हैं कि आज जो हमें ये शार्टेज नज़र आ रही है पानी नहीं है बिजली नहीं है आपका टेम्परेचर चेंज हो गया इसकी सबसे बड़ी वजह नीलम जेलम हाइड्रो पावर प्रोजेक्ट है people are angry protest marches torch rallies and massive anti pakistan demonstration is now an everyday sight in pk the fear of losing resources has been compounded by an unethical entry of beijing into the construction of these power projects the resistance called by the local leaders has resonated with the mass and they have provided a fresh momentum to the movement they want both china and pakistan to leave their place riyasat hamari ho wasail hamare hain darya hamare hain lekin ek yajood wajood ki qoum china uth ke aata hai aur islamabad ke andar baith kar pakistan se wada karta hai hamare daryaon ke upar pakistan aur china ko kisne haq diya Over 86,000 square kilometers of Kashmir's territory is under Pakistan's illegal occupation for more than seven decades. Pakistan says it has granted autonomy to the region, but people say they don't enjoy even the fundamental rights. Political dissent is muzzled by one means or other. while brute high-handedness has always been the go-to option administration has arbitrarily used the draconian anti-terrorism act to frame youth which it finds a challenge to its oppressive regime however people say they are determined to get their rights back and a seemingly stronger movement has taken off against the establishment which many experts believe has the potential of growing into a full-fledged rebellion Moving on, when the coronavirus has literally overwhelmed the medical facilities around the world, there are a few who have been consistently endeavouring to improve the affected situation. In India, a group of teachers has taken upon itself to teach the impoverished children as they cannot afford e-classes. The country has opened its economy after months of lockdown, but schools and colleges are still closed. The government says it is mulling reopening senior classes. The pandemic is continuously affecting more people across the world, but a significant contraction in just previous economic quarter has forced them to reopen markets. In an old temple town in India's southern Tamil Nadu state, teachers have taken upon themselves to keep children from impoverished communities who have no access to technology and help them stay connected with education. With masks on and textbooks in their hands, children sit on a cemented platform in the school premises where their teachers, despite pandemic, give them lessons. The government has pushed for classes to move online but in India many of the students were deprived owing to absence of internet connection or a phone altogether Adhe nerangala pallikku manarulukku unda thodarvu undu koraiyudhu indha kaala kattathilla neraiya kudumbangal undu yelma nilaiyil irukanga andha kudandhaiyum kootittu pora velaikku kootittu pora oru sunnalai yerpattirukku so indha vishayangal la enna na adutha drop out idai nilai ड्रापउटे 
the number of cases in India has registered a sudden jump in past week, with Thursday alone registering over 83,000 cases. The country, just like others, is forced to open the economy as its people will be more vulnerable without money and food. India, however, has one of the lowest death rates and one of the fastest recovery rates. PM Narendra Modi said that the world required a fresh mindset to fight the prolonged pandemic. When the year 2020 began, did anybody imagine this is how it would pan out? A global pandemic has impacted everyone. It is testing our resilience, our public health systems, our economic systems. The current situation demands a fresh mindset, a mindset where the approach to development is human-centric. While the cases are rising sharply, Indian fight too has strengthened with time. With over a million tests every day, India has been vigorously working at treating more people at time. Individual states are using different techniques to bring down the numbers. Government of Delhi has made pulse oximeter as its fighting tool. Thousands have been distributed to isolate asymptomatic and mildly asymptomatic cases. Other states are continuing with weekend lockdowns. India plans to produce billions of doses after the vaccine for the disease is finalized. Moving on. Good times are appearing not too far for Afghans. While the intra-Afghan dialogue in Qatar is just a matter of time following the release of hardcore prisoners, the market too has grown optimistic. The government says it is ready to provide all possible support to the major players who can help grow Afghanistan into an industrialized nation. Today we show you how an indigenous firm, Amin Noor Industrial Company, is setting the precedent as others wait for better and conducive atmosphere to return. Amin Noor Industrial Company, an Afghan firm has unveiled a fleet of brand new battery-powered passenger vehicles and mini-trucks. They all are made locally with limited foreign mechanical parts. The company has created 11 models. It aspires to be an industrial giant of Afghanistan and has already produced 200 vehicles till date. Some of these vehicles are electric and powered by rechargeable batteries, others by diesel. The middle class, which the company believes has expanded, despite a constant warlike situation in the country, is going to be its key target in coming decade. The current cost of production will range from 1200 US dollars to 2500 US dollars. مرور زمان بعد از سه سال متانیسم که تقریبا 80 فیصد قطعات از این را خود ما تولید کنیم تنها 20 فیصد که مانده پلان آینده ما ای است تا به این سال بعد یا در سال بعد که خود انجن فرض مثال ما انجن تایر شیشه که متاسفانه افغانستان تولیدات شیشه نداره تولیدات انجن نداره به همین ترتیب کم تو مجناس دیگه که در استفاده شده تولیدات افغانی نداریم اما پلان خود ما است که ما پلان داریم که بعد از 5 سال خود ما انجن تولید کنیم به همین ترتیب موتر و شیشه as of now, Amin Noor Industrial Company does not have a production goal, but it will manufacture vehicles according to orders. The country has endured and continues to face major security challenges posed by Taliban. Frequent power cuts are another challenge that has traded through. Earlier, President Ashraf Ghani paid a visit to its manufacturing unit. The official statement released by Presidential Palace said that his government supported all industrial endeavors that were taken in line of improving country's self-reliance. Government is hopeful that these passenger vehicles will receive a positive response from people of the country. 
it is uh, 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 environment friendly uh, because uh, it is by charging uh, chargeable batteries. It will be cheaper for the consumers uh, and in the meantime uh, uh, the overall cost is much cheaper than those products which we uh, import from Afghanistan. So we uh, are confident that the Afghan uh, market will welcome these type of products, not only from Ami Noor companies, but uh, all other uh, investors uh, if they come and invest on uh, quality products. Afghanistan has historically been ravished by war and violence and relies mostly on imports for vehicles, owing to a protracted war with the US-led NATO forces in early 2000. The country's economy witnessed an unprecedented collapse. However, the situation improved significantly in the last decade due to the infusion of billions of dollars in international assistance and remittance from Afghan expatriates. And now, with Afghan Taliban ready to come to the table for intra-Afghan dialogues, the prospects of a healthier economy have grown much bigger and brighter. Moving on to India, where devotees gathered in large numbers in southern state of Kerala to celebrate their biggest festival, Onam. According to Hindu mythology, the festival marks the commemoration of Vamana Avtar of Lord Vishnu and the subsequent homecoming of the mythical king Mahabali. The festival is observed with fanfare, but this year, due to the coronavirus pandemic, it was celebrated in a lower tone with social distancing norms. Let's have a look. With the beats of drums, priests and devotees throng the temple in India's southern state of Kerala to mark the biggest 10 day long harvest festival, Onam. It is the annual celebrations of the homecoming of mythical King Mahabali, who is believed to come from the nether world to check on his citizens. Every year, people who celebrate the Harvest Festival take holy day and take out religious processions as they participate in various activities like cultural dances and singing competitions on the occasion. But this year, the festivities were subdued due to the coronavirus outbreak. Today, this is uh, it's called Mahabali Irunallipa. That means the King itself, that means the god Vishnu going and bringing uh, Vamana to the temple. That's a Sankalpa, uh, that, uh, which is Kerala's believing, that is the Onam. And the current prelevi, sorry, current uh, prevailing situations because of Corona, we are not able to do the Onam Sadhya this time. But definitely, grace of God, Vishnu, next year definitely will do that. Citizens of Kerala also organized a traditional fair in Kochi to celebrate the grandeur of the festival. From different flavours of local dessert payasam to banana chips, a number of food items were on display at different stalls at the fair. And after visiting, uh, being our respects, uh, we'll be going back home and having a small sadhya with our family. Nothing very special because things are very bad around. But still, uh, following the tradition, Whatever with whatever limitations we have, we are having a happy Onam. Onam is the prime and prominent festival for Keralites. And it is celebrated in the beginning of the month of Chingam, the first month of Malayalam calendar. The festival is greatly awaited across Kerala, often referred to as God's own country as it is believed that the Harvest Festival heralds prosperity and happiness in the society. According to the popular myth, Onam is the traditional festival of Malayalis originated from the Indian state of Kerala. So with that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.